quando volete. Ego sum Johannes, Johannes Kepler, Mathematicus, credo spazioso numen in orbe. I believe in a geometric order of the universe. Johannes Kepler was born on 27th December 1571 in the free imperial city of Weilderstadt in the German state of Baden-Württemberg. As a child, my mother brought me to a high place to look at the great comets of 1577. Since that day, I have been in love with the heavens and I've studied hard to understand the harmony of the universe. Johannes was an excellent student. After moving through grammar school, Latin school and seminary at Marlborough, he attended the University of Tübingen. Despite his desire to become a minister, he was offered a position as teacher of mathematics and astronomy in Graz. He accepted. In 1596, in Graz, I solved the Mysterium Cosmographicum, the mystery of the cosmos. I unveiled the most secret architecture of the universe. I will explain it to you. The Sun is at the center. Then comes the sphere of Mercury embedded in the octahedron, surrounded by the sphere of Venus in its turn embedded the icosahedron. Then our home, the sphere of the Earth, surrounded by the dodecahedron. This supports the sphere of Mars, which supports the tetrahedron supporting in its turn the sphere of Jupiter. Then comes the cube, the sphere of Saturn, and then the stars. It's easy, isn't it? Perfect symmetry. Nothing else can fit in the cosmos. Somebody noticed the young talent of Kepler. Tycho Brahe, the great Danish astronomer, the man with the golden nose. The Earth is at the center of the universe. The moon and the sun revolve around the Earth, while Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn revolve around the sun. I collected extremely accurate data to prove it, but I need an ingenious mathematician. Kepler, come to Prague. Kepler, accepted. The Earth is at the center. No, the Sun. Give me the data. No, you must use them to prove that the Earth is at the center. It is not. It is the Sun. Give me the data. Mmm, I will give him those of Mars. They really don't make any sense. In 1609, in Prague, I created an Astronomia Nova, a new astronomy. Fighting with Mars, I discovered that the orbits of the planets are not circles, nor compositions of circular motions, but ellipses with the sun at one of the foci. I discovered that planets move in such a way that the line joining them to the sun sweeps out equal areas in equal times. Almost no one read the new astronomy. Not even <coughs> Galileo, the Italian astronomer, who in those days was busy with his newly invented telescope. On March 13, 1610, he published the Sidereus Nuncius, the Starry Messenger. I pointed the telescope toward the heavens. I saw the mountains on the moon, I saw the stars of which the Milky Way is made, I saw the four moons of Jupiter. No one believes me. Kepler, please help me. I do not think that Galileo, an Italian, 
has treated me, a German, so well that in return I must flatter him. I wrote to him so many times. He never answered my letters, and now he is begging for my help. Nonetheless, he is right. In 1611, the growing political and religious tension in Prague came to a head. Kepler had to flee. He found a position in Linz. In 1618, in Linz, I discovered the Harmonicus Mundi, the very perfect harmony of the world. I showed that the most perfect musical ratio, the sesquialtera proportio, the perfect fifth, the three to two ratio, is responsible for the movement of all plants. Res est certissima exactissima que quod proportio que es interpinorum quorum radicale in tempora periodica si praecise sesquialtera proportionis mediarum distanziarum. mother, Katharina, was accused of being a witch. Kepler had to fight hard to prevent his mother from being burned at the stake. Mom is not a witch. In the truth, she is a fairy. November 15, 1630, in Regensburg. His gravestone had an epitaph that he had written himself. Mensus eram coelos, num terra e metzer umbras. Mens coelestis erat, corporis umbra iaque. I've measured the heavens. Now, I'm measuring the earth's shadows. Skybound my mind, earthbound my body rests. That evening, there was a meteor shower. As it was reported at the time, fiery balls fell from heaven. Piano, Giulia la narratrice, e Giusto e Alessandro, Tico e Galileo e Kepler rispettivamente.